so I was going to start this review now and hopefully film it again in 20 years. Okay, so I can't probably jump forward 20 years because I'll probably be dead by then. I mean, I'm 36 now. Surprise, surprise. But for the art of it, I can jump back 20 years. So I have no idea of that footage there. It's probably got something to do. I think I've probably chosen me walking around red shit on here. You know, it's the same car park I ran into the street sign. Do oh, you duck? Yeah, so anyway, there, yeah, 20 years ago. <laughs> just like that, click event. So I'm currently doing a review for Old Boy. I've just done a one for King Kong Lives. I'm just ranting, filling time. Actually, not filling time, wasting time, actually. What time is it? <laughs> should, should have left by now. Okay, so yeah, mobile phones are a big part of this movie. So, Old Boy is a remake. Um, a lot of people love the original, but to bring it into the American market, the British market, it obviously needs a remake. And stars an original Goonie, probably the most successful Goonie, also Thanos. Also stars Scarlet Witch, um, who absolutely looks amazing in this as well. Um, so it's got a um, Spider from the Goodfellas in it as well. So it's got a few good casts, Find the Truth, it's directed by Spike Lee. Make them hurt. So basically, if you don't know it, I am going to fucking spoil this movie. So please check this movie out. I should have had a hammer. I don't keep weapons. I might have a hammer. No, don't pick a hammer up. Anyway, so just keep on rolling with this. So basically, Josh Brolin is a bit of a prick in this. Um, he's basically had his trekkered past. He's addicted to vodka. Um, he's basically about to land the deal of his life. But basically, because of sex pest, he basically gets fucking backhanded. I completely missed cue there. That's what I was meant to do. And basically, ends up out in the streets, puking everywhere. Got a bit of a New Orleans feel in this, you know, it seems, but it's not New Orleans, but it just, it felt New Orleans. I'm not even sure where it's fucking filmed, but anyway. Um, yeah, octopus on the back. So yeah, anyway, Samuel Jackson's in this as well, which is surprising. Um, so yeah, free Avengers for the price of one. So anyway, um, oh, Thingy Bobby's in it as well. Rennie, Rennie just won the Academy Award. Freddie Mercury, he's in it for like a split second. It's like a hammer to the head. So anyway, um, basically, he goes out there, gets pissed, you know, he's basically lost the deal of his life, he's going to get fired, his ex-wife doesn't want fucking nothing to do with him, he's not seeing his fucking daughter, he's missed his daughter's birthday, because she's only three year old, and he's like, you know what, fuck you, and basically, all of a sudden, he wakes up in a room, and he's like, what the fuck's going on here, and it's like, you know, a hotel room, but he finds out that it's got a fake window, and he doesn't know what's going there, all he gets is Chinese food through the door, he doesn't really know a clue what's going down. He keeps giving vodka, gets drunk, grows a beard, um, tries to kill himself, um, watches the telly, takes a lot in from the television, you know, feeds that. And it jumps ahead 20 years, it jumps quite fast, you know what I mean? You're like, fuck, no, he's been there 20 years. And I think Josh Brolin as well, I think the transformation's really good because when he comes out, he's really thin, he's, you know, he's been, you know, he's not seen sunlight, so he's like, happy fucking eyes. So he wakes up in a box in the middle of a field, and there's a woman with the umbrella, and he follows her. And like, he's watched a lot of kung fu he's trained himself you know he takes on four lads and it's like there's a bit where this guy just goes from vertical to the face on the floor in seconds you think fuck me that was brutal now the original obviously is inspired by big long take scenes and i know spike where you had to justify the edit in this and then there's no been ever been an uncut version but there's meant to be this massive take with a hammer which i haven't seen so anyway he tries to track down what's going down what's quite good you know he works out who's who's kidnapped him, or where he's been kidnapped in hell by the taste of Chinese food. He's like Johnny Depp in uh, Once Upon a Time in America. And he basically goes around and he meets this girl who basically works at the blood bank, kind of help help the homeless kind of thing. And she's like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna look after you. He gets stabbed a few times. She Googles it. He uses Google. It's like that uh, Titanic 2, when Jack refreezes, looking for Rose and Googles her. That's what he's doing. He, he, works, he tries to work out who did this to him. Now he finds out that this corporation basically locks people away. It's a private, nasty little kind of thing, but you know, he's basically been victim to them, so it's not really their fault. You know, he's just doing a job. Samuel Jackson is just taking a paycheck in this. This has been left wide open for a, maybe as a sequel, but it's also been closed cased. Um, but yeah, the idea that there is companies out there which would, would just fucking kidnap people and just, you know, forgetting about them, disappeared, you know, gone. <laughs> and yeah, so basically, He's let loose, and he's an absolute raging lunatic. Tracks down these people, goes absolutely apeshit with a hammer, gets a bit of information, and then the story continues. And the, you know, I had seen it, but I mean, it, this film is brutal. The effects are good, but when he starts fighting with a hammer, it gets so fast, but then slows right down. You think, hang on a minute. 
And like he takes on so many people. And you think, wow, he's a fucking maniac. But Josh Brolin really carries it well. Now, I'm not going to spoil the twists, but the twists in it are brilliant. I like the twists. They're a bit dark and twisted, no pun intended. But I think that's really good for the film. Um, uh, it's you know, very raunchy. It's definitely an 18. It definitely warrants being a fucking 18, that's for sure. Um, as I say, Samuel Jackson is... You know, tries to play different characters. He has a fucking big, isn't that big? He has a bleached mohawk. But again, it's trying to show you the passing of time. But I really enjoyed it. Again, as I say, I've enjoyed it enough to go right. Sitting on the shelf, it's going to get filed. I didn't do a review for Kick Ass 2. I didn't do a review for Bad Neighbors 2. I didn't do another review for Youth and Revolt. I didn't do, well, sort of did a review for. I didn't do a review for Feast Diva or Hostiles or Legend. But old boy decide a lot deserves a little rant. So yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the outtakes. Right, the outtakes is gonna be me spoiling the fucking film, so like watch the film, right? Because the fucking twist that it's all about fucking daddy, daddy, like the guy likes getting fucked off his daddy, his sister likes getting fucked off the daddy, his daddy didn't like everyone working out that he got fucked off his daddy. That's what Josh Brolin did. He discovered that the dad was fucking, not only the daughter, well, he didn't know the actual fucking boy, but yeah, the daddy was a massive sex pest, moved away, and then decided to kill his daughter, kill his wife, missed his fucking son, blew his fucking head off, which again is quite brutal. And um, the son grows up to be a b big billionaire, not quite wired right enough to put this guy in and then manipulate a plan and kidnap his daughter and make his daughter sleep with Josh Brolin and say, did Thanos just fuck Scarlet Witch? I mean, while fucking Nick Fury watched on the cameras, I mean, yeah, you could cast outside the box a bit. But I think Josh Brolin really carried it well. I wouldn't... See, I would have cast Samuel Jackson differently, no pun intended. Something like you know the pun, but like I don't think Jackson. It's like Samuel Jackson in RoboCop. Like no, like it's great that you get Samuel Jackson in a movie, but like some movies, I just don't think you should cast him. I think they could have cast somebody completely different for that. It probably would have worked a little bit better. Um, but yeah. The twists, the turns, the realisation that he's fucked his own daughter. And then the realisation that, you know, he should have just fucking blew his head off. You know, there, my daughter can have the money. Bang, I'm dead. But no, he gives the money back to go live back in his room. The room he's wanted out for 20 years. But again, he's a wild animal. It's almost like a story of Rambo. The guy has been... The guy has found... been put in a, He's been made that way. 20 years of just, you know... It's like Kevin Bacon in... Um, uh, murder on the first, you know what I mean? He's been a hole for three years. Someone whispers in his ear, day like, there's a fork, stabs a guy in the face, you know. It's like, there we go. You know, who's the who's the arena animal here? But again, I think suicide would have probably been the end way, just to just go, right, everything's sorted. My daughter's safe. I don't want to ever know I fucked her. And that's it. And it's just like, wow. It's like, it's such a dark twist. But I like it. I love the style. It's got some great camera work. Um... Especially when it's just falling in the head and all that and panning over and all that. So, yeah, it just gets a little bit weird. But, no, well done to Spike Lee for making that movie. It's fucking dark. But, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to go to work anyway. So, yeah, thanks for watching. What the fuck was that? I see in the shadow. It's my fucking cup. Wow. Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now. And now, the end is here.